Welcome back everybody. We have another body armor test going on for you today. It's kind of a two for one, although it is a very similar product. Both products are similar rather, I should say. So they are the Battle Steel full uh, wraparound carrier, 3A rated. So any of your pistol calibers for the new folks out there. So it should stop everything up to 357 Magnum as well as 44 Magnum and everything underneath. Of course, we will test that today. So it comes in a couple different SKUs. So it comes in the one that we have here, which is a little bit more concealable. And then it comes in one here with our Molly webbing on there. So this one, basically what you get is the two panels and there's different sizes. I just mentioned that. So back up here, you guys see, this is the extra large and I am six feet tall right now, around 200 pounds, way too fat better than I should be, but that should give you a representation of the sizing. Of course, you can lower these by using the shoulder straps or raise them by using the shoulder straps. Um, but you get full coverage, so full side coverage, which certainly is nice. Some big pluses to it right up front is going to be that it is American made. Uh, they have an eight year warranty, which most armor certainly doesn't. And of course, it's pretty lightweight as well. Each panel is only seven millimeters thick. And I think with a size large, the uh, total thing, including the carrier comes in right at five pounds. So can't really be mad about that. On this one, obviously we have different straps than we have on this one here, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, but this one, obviously with our Molly webbing there, is gives you the ability to add things to it, pouches, radios, etc. Uh, you can see on the front there, we do have our spot for our hook and loop tape. So you can add anything in there, but those are also Molly points there as well that you can add into it. We also have these lines if you wanna run comms or a hydration tube or whatever the case that you want to run in there. And of course the straps on this one are a little bit beefier, I guess you'd say, uh, which makes sense because on these ones, they have a pouch on the inside. We'll show you here in just a second that allows you to add an armor plate, a hard armor plate if you want to. It's sewn in, so it's not gonna move around, which is nice. A lot of these um, primarily level 3A carriers will have a pouch, but it kind of just flops around. This one doesn't, it's sewn in. So that certainly is nice. And of course we have our drag handle here at the rear with nice box stitching, should you actually have to employ it. But I think these are gonna be very popular in the law enforcement market. I should mention these are like brand new. This is actually my idea. I'm the one who uh, brought it up. So I'm taking all the credit for it. Hopefully it doesn't fail. Um, and they also ship with this kind of carrying case, which I know a lot of police departments want. I don't really think many civilians would, but hey, do what you gotta do. We have our very nice uh, mesh in there for breathability because regardless of the conditions, armor is always hot. So like right now it's about 80 degrees out and I'm sweating, uh, just wearing it. So there is that. Um, we do have the panels that come out there. And of course the actual panel size will depend on the size carrier that you get. Makes sense, right? Um, but as you can see, gives you that nice wraparound coverage. These are made out of UHW MPE. So basically most of your level 3A um, uh, armor out there is going to be one of two materials, UHW MPE, which is an ultra high molecular polymer weight something. Anyway, it'll be here on your screen. Uh, but basically that, that and Kevlar. So in my opinion, if I had to pick one of the two, I would pick UHW MPE. It's more consistent in my opinion. And both of them certainly work. Kevlar works. It's been working for 40 years now. Uh, but UHW MPE, in my opinion, is a superior uh, product. It's a little bit more comfortable to wear in my opinion and tends to be thinner for the same amount of uh, coverage and wear or stopping power rather I should say which in this case stopping power is actually a real thing but as you guys can see here this is the place where you're going to put your plate and as you can see it's sewn in all the way and then we have our velcro pouch slide it in there and then tighten your velcro to as tight as it needs to be for that particular plate and uh, I think that's pretty much it let's get to shooting it before we actually start shooting it, we do need to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Gunspot. For folks that don't know, Gunspot is an online auction site where you can buy, sell, trade, guns, firearms, accessories, NFA items, silencers, whatever you want. You can log in very quickly if you don't have an account, start bidding, start selling. Uh, it's just a great place for folks who like the things that we talk about here on the channel. So again, thanks to Gunspot. Now let's shoot it. We set the armor up probably 10 yards down range. We have a bunch of dirt behind it to simulate your chest cavity. It's a lot. I had to tape the box because the box was coming apart. So it's probably at least 40 pounds of dirt. First load up is going to be some 38 special, 130 grain HSTs. Oops. Send that one one more over. Uh, coming out of the 686 plus.
as you all saw, there was our entrance there and out the back, absolutely nothing as we would expect. Let's keep going. Next up, some 115 grain Minuteman munitions. Uh, see how it does. Once again, y'all saw the entrance hole right there. Open it up there. And you can see we had absolutely no pass through. We'll keep going. Up next, we have some 185 grain jacketed hollow point 45 ACP, so fast for caliber, coming out of my UMP. So again, longer barrel. It's gonna probably, this, this load out of this barrel length, it's roughly equivalent to what you expect with like 10 mil. Let's check it out. At this point, y'all have seen the slow-mo, I haven't, but I'm pretty sure all three hits were right here, which is a heck of a group for a UMP, might I add. And <laughs> so basically, absolutely no pass-through. It deformed it though, for sure. You guys could probably see that if I opened it up, I can feel it. But yeah, see, it deformed it there. One of the bullets just fell out, um, but absolutely no pass-through at all on the actual armor. We'll flatten it out and keep going. Up next, we have the same 686 from Smith & Wesson. However, we have a 357 Magnum. This is 180 grain Swift A-frame, so full power load. This is what this is rated for. It's sort of the top end of what you can expect with 3A. And uh, we'll see how it does, four inch barrel. So plenty of barrel as well to get that velocity up. Ooh, let's check it out. As y'all saw, we impacted right there up top. That would be a stinging blow for sure if it hits you. And you can see there it's deformed, but you'd be just fine. Absolutely didn't penetrate at all. Let's keep going. Up next, we have something that is absolutely not rated for. This is one of the most powerful uh, revolvers or handguns on the planet. This is Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. It's got the full eight inch barrel and we're firing some Underwood ammo out of it. So 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Hand cannon, 10 feet, not rated for this. Should be fun. Woo -hoo -hoo. As y'all saw in the slow-mo, we center punched it and I don't know, I haven't checked yet. Oh, oh, we have some action. What do we got? Looks like we have some tearing does not look like it went through, but let's open it up and check. It definitely deformed it, I can tell you that much. As you would imagine, that's a powerful round. So here's what we have. I'm gonna pull everything back so you guys can better see it, but it didn't go through. So, let me go on the camera. So that's where it is right there. I can actually feel the heat from the bullet coming through there. Did not penetrate, but as you can see, it pushed it in there a good, Good bit. You can definitely still feel the bullet in there, but you'd be alive. I should be rolling in footage here, but you can see how hard it hit that uh, target. Definitely just pushed it right on in. Next up, we have some buckshot, two and three quarter inch, and it'll be coming out of my MP12. And other side. All right, well, let's see how it likes the buckshot. As y'all saw there, the nine pellets impacted right there in the center. That's also where the 38 special hit. It's also where the nine mil hit. It's also where the 500 Magnum hit. So one of the cool things about UHW and PE is that it is multi-hit rated. So basically the way it works, and I'm super oversimplifying it, is that when a bullet comes in, it the material itself in the fastest way you could imagine becomes liquid and then that grabs the bullet and then it turns back into a hard substance. So it's very quick and that's how it grabs it. But what's cool about that is you can really shoot the same spot over and over again, and it'll just keep grabbing the bullet, going back to hard, grabbing the bullet, go back to hard. So all of them are right there. And again, nothing actually went through. That's just the mark from the 50 cal. So, excuse me, from the 500 Magnum, but we'll push it all back together. Cause again, it definitely deformed it and keep going. 
So I just went ahead and switched the panel to the backside. That's just for video purposes. It's not because, you know, it can't handle it, but we have a one out slug coming out next and uh, we'll see how she likes that. One thing about the M&P is that it is definitely not good for these kinds of tests. I should take note of that and stop using it. <laughs> Most shotguns you can just throw a load right in there, but the M&P you can't. You gotta work the loader. Great gun though, just weird to load. All right, we're in business. <laughs> that, that one might've went through. Let's check it out. So I don't think I've ever actually hit 3A with a slug before. That was the first one. That was a copper slug, just for those of you guys wondering. So it's not gonna deform or anything like that very easily. It's like a lead one would. And uh, we definitely hit it with some force. Once again, though, it did not actually go through, but it deformed it so much that it tore it. I wasn't thinking that was gonna happen. The reason I flipped it over was so it'd be easier for you guys to see uh, as we continue to go along. But of course we tore it. Actually, I bet you can still see it. Yeah, you can. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the bullet is still right in there. Regardless, we are going to keep going. At this point, folks, we are just testing things that it is not rated for. It already passed the test, but we have some 40 grain uh, 5.7 coming out of my uh, PSA 5.7, so full length barrel. And uh, I have no idea if it's gonna go through or not. Let's find out. Let's check it out. I have not looked at it. You guys are gonna find out same time I do. So there's our entrance. And then, I don't know. Let's find out. I don't know if that stopped it or not. Definitely tore it, that much I do know for sure. So it went in there. No, nope, it definitely didn't. So let me, once again, just kind of tear everything away. So that you guys see, right there is the bullet. Hopefully that shows up on camera, but that little nub, that's it. It's hot and it stopped it. Pretty impressive. Once again, continuing on with things that this is not rated for. 220 grain Remington, open tip match, subsonic 300 blackout. Coming out of a seven inch barrel here on our Caracal pistol. And uh, we'll see. So as you guys saw there, we hit that one high and I think it stopped it. If so, that'll only be the second time I've ever stopped 300 blackout with a level 3A. But let's not count. Did it stop it? Let me see if I can feel the bullet. There's definitely a, just like the other one where it's sort of pushed up there. Now I can feel the bullet. It's absolutely stopped. You guys can probably see the bullet right there smushed down so impressive that is literally the second level 3a rated uh armor ever on the channel that has stopped subsonic 300 blackout uh, so for those that don't know 300 blackout versus like 45 acp i have very similar uh energy velocities um, but the spitzer type bullet with the 300 blackout the ballistic coefficient of that usually will punch right on through this stuff but it didn't pretty impressive for seven millimeters of UHWMP. It's not rated for any 300 blackout, but now we're gonna go supersonic. So this is 150 grain Remington. Again, still coming out of a short barrel, but I mean, this has to go through. I don't know, one way to find out. Let's check it out. As y'all could probably infer, I was pretty impressed with that. The performance was excellent. So the actual rounds that stopped in this backside there, which again, it's not rated for, I actually pulled them out with a knife and uh, kind of still stuck with the strands, but that's the slug. You guys should see photos coming in. That's the subsonic 300 blackout there. And uh, there is the 5.7, all stopped in there. Very, very impressive. So aside, of course, from the actual performance that you guys just saw, that's what it looks like when you pull it apart. I had to pull the layers apart so I could find those bullets. But um, 
Aside from the performance that you guys just saw, one thing that we didn't mention that is definitely important is going to be the price point on these. So the one with the slick carrier, like the concealed type carrier that we were actually just shooting, that one there is going to come in right now at $369. And the one here with the Molly carrier and the internal spots for hard plates and things like that is going to come in for $399. There's a ton of different options in terms of sizing over there. Basically, what they recommend is just wear the size that you'd wear for your t-shirt but again that is up to you guys of how much coverage you actually want um, in terms of price point that's phenomenal again they're made in america so those of you guys who work in like departments or security firms that require that uh here you go uh made in america at the price we're talking about for full coverage and that's shipped both of those by the way so you really cannot complain at all about the performance that we saw today again only the second one to ever stop a subsonic 300 blackout here on the channel and those of you who watch the channel know that we test a lot of 3a armor here and it did phenomenally well if you guys have any questions or anything like that you can post them down below in the comments section of course link to pick these up will be down below and uh definitely if you like this type of video and you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you are subscribed just double check because lately that doesn't mean anything um, and then additionally if you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel and you're subscribed that's because there is an algorithm centering your eyes for my content so in order to avoid that you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen this email goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email so that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. Additionally, should these go on sale, which they really don't, Battle Sale doesn't, Battle Steel doesn't do sales because their prices are so low anyway. Um, but should the items, the guns, the ammo, the optics, etc., that we used in the video go on sale, uh, it'll go out in my daily deals email. The email contains six or seven of the best deals that we find on the internet on that particular day. You can sign up for it at the website here in your screen. And if it's in that email, it's the cheapest that I know of anywhere on the internet. I've done the price comparisons, so that way it saves you guys some time and hopefully saves you some money as well and with that that's all i got for you guys thank you all for watching i truly appreciate it now look forward to seeing everybody in the next video